Hello and welcome to another one of the A-Level Biology Lessons for Free with Ms. Estrick. Today we're going into the final lesson in the carbohydrate series and that is polysaccharides. So the polysaccharides are created by condensation reactions and you have multiple condensation reactions bonding together all of the glucose monomers. And the three polysaccharides you need to know are all created from glucose monomers. We have starch, which is found in plants and it's a store of glucose. Cellulose, found in plants and its function is for structural strength. Glycogen is found in animals and it's a store of glucose. Now that's surface level information, which you may have remembered from GCSE. We will be going through today much more detail about the structure and how that actually links to these three functions. So you'll need to have a copy of this table for your notes, ideally. Uh, it covers all of the key points that you would need to know from the specification, and it compares it across all three polysaccharides. So listen out for the monomers, the bonds, function, location, structure, and for the highest marks, it's linking that structure to explain the function. So you might need to pause now just to draw down that table. As we go through, slot in the information and at the end we'll go through the answers. So starch to begin with is created from two polymers. Both of those polymers are created from alpha glucose though and where the glycosidic bond forms is what creates a slightly different structure where you can get amylose and amylopectin. We've already said it's found in plant cells Specifically, you find it in grains of starch inside of chloroplasts, as an example. And its function is an insoluble store of glucose. So we'll look at amylose and amylopectin. Amylose is the first structure that we'll go through. So it's created by condensation reactions. In this case for amylose, the bond, the glycosidic bond, forms between carbon 1 and carbon 4. And this will happen over and over and over because it's a polymer, it repeatedly happens. Now that unbranched chain of amylose coils up to make a helix. So that is our structure amylose, but there's also amylopectin. Now this also is formed by condensation reactions and this lower part you can see is one to four glycosidic bonds. And we can tell that because you have this straight chain. At this location though, we now have part of it branching off. And this is created by a one to six glycosidic bond. So here we have carbon one of this glucose molecule and carbon six. And due to that location, it causes a branch. So amylopectin is quite a branched polymer, polymer and amylose is a straight polymer, which spirals up. The next one then is glycogen. This is also formed from alpha glucose. This time though it's found in animals inside of the muscle and liver cells. The function is also an insoluble store of starch. So we are gonna see some very similar structures. So we can see that glycogen looks incredibly similar to amylopectin. It has one to four glycosidic bonds and it has one to six glycosidic bonds. One of the key differences though is glycogen has even more one to six glycosidic bonds compared to amylopectin. So it's a highly branched polymer. So this just gives an overview of how highly branched this molecule is. It can still be compacted though, so you can fit large amounts of glucose in a small space. Lastly then, cellulose. This is the most different in structure and therefore function. Cellulose, the monomer, is beta-glucose this time, so the other structural isomer. Its location is in the cell wall of plants and it provides structural strength, so it prevents the cell from bursting when it becomes turgid with water. So the structure then, the beta-glucose molecules form by condensation reactions to create this long straight chain but they only contain one to four glycosidic bonds. So you only have straight chains. Now those long straight chains of beta glucose line up parallel to each other. And they are then held in place 
by many, many hydrogen bonds. And that's what these blue lines here are representing. Lots and lots of hydrogen bonds. So if we were to describe the structure that we've got so far, you'd get a mark for describing that there are long straight chains. There would be a second mark for pointing out that these chains are held by many hydrogen bonds to form a structure which we call a fibril. So all of these long straight chains held by many hydrogen bonds, that is a fibril. Now the way that this provides structural strength is because of the number of hydrogen bonds. So I've pointed out here, an individual hydrogen bond is weak. Due to the large number, collectively, they provide the strength to the cell wall. So that's it. That is our three polysaccharides. And we'll go through the table so you can just check you have noted down all of the key information. So first of all, the monomers. We have alpha glucose in starch and glycogen. And cellulose is beta glucose. The bonds that form... Starch forms 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds in amylose, but 1 to 4 and 1 to 6 in amylopectin. 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds only in cellulose, and glycogen forms 1 to 4 and 1 to 6 glycosidic bonds. But it'd be worth noting that glycogen has more 1 to 6 glycosidic bonds than amylopectin, because that's going to come into explaining the difference between the structures. Function. So starch and glycogen are stores of glucose, whereas cellulose is for structural strength in the cell wall. Location, starch is found in plant cells, for example, inside of chloroplasts. Cellulose is also found in plant cells inside of the cell wall. And glycogen is found in animals, in the muscle and liver cells. So the structure, starch is made up of two polymers of alpha glucose. Amylose, which is an unbranched helix, it's unbranched because it only contains one to four glycosidic bonds. Amylopectin is branched and that's because it also has the one to six and that causes the branching. Cellulose is a polymer which is formed from long straight chains and those chains are held in parallel by many, many hydrogen bonds to form a structure called a fibril. Glycogen is highly branched and it's even more branched than amylopectin because it has more 1 to 6 glycosidic bonds. So the last part then is the explanation of how the structure provides the function. So the fact that it's a storage molecule, starch, the helix shape of amylose means it can be compacted down. As if you were squashing a spring, you're squashing it, you're compacting it. And that's a benefit because it means you can fit a lot of glucose into a small space. It has a double advantage though because it also has amylopectin which is a branch structure and having lots of branches coming off provides multiple exposed ends of the molecule and that provides a larger surface area for enzymes to attach and therefore they can rapidly hydrolyze starch back into glucose to release the glucose to the plant if it needs it. The last one here is insoluble. Now that is the same for all three. So all three polysaccharides are insoluble in water. And that is an advantage because if it doesn't dissolve in water, it will not affect the water potential and therefore it won't affect osmosis. Now that's a benefit because it means you won't end up having excess water moving into the cells, potentially causing them to burst or in plants, making them become turgid. Cellulose. So cellulose, the key point here is because those long straight chains are held in parallel by many hydrogen bonds, collectively they provide the strength to the cell wall. And lastly then, glycogen. This is also a branch structure, but it's even more highly branched than amylopectin. So that means it can be even more rapidly hydrolyzed back to glucose. And that's an advantage because it's a storage molecule in animals. And animals need to be able to move. Movement requires energy and glucose is needed in respiration to release that energy. So that is why animals have a more highly branched store of glucose compared to plants. So hopefully you found that a helpful overview of the polysaccharides or maybe an introduction. 
Um, maybe look over it again if you need to just check you've got all of those details in the box. If not, go on to practicing some of the questions um, or even going on to a test now on the carbohydrates.